Christ in our personal lives, in our per, in personal in areas of our lives. Okay, these areas, these are, and, and and as I talk about these areas, or I'm I'm, I'm going to touch on on the first four real quick, just kind of a kind of a refreshment. Okay, should there it should be a guide to direct and help us give out that outward appearance of what a, of of our Christian life. Amen. Because it. it the outward appearance of our Christian life is just as important, if maybe not important, and more important than that inner, amen? Because it's what people see, all right? It's what people see. Because there's, a, there's an old saying, you may have heard it, you may be the only Bible somebody ever reads, amen? So our, our, our life needs to, to show our Christianity, amen? Show our Christianity. Okay, so of the this six areas, the four I've already covered four. The six areas are salvation, baptism, our prayer life, our personal devotion in the Bible, family devotion, and the Bible, and church attendance, involvement, and soul winning. Okay, all right. So if if you were involved in a contest which had certain requirements to uh, to obtain rewards or benefits, what would you do? When you when you when you, anybody in here play basketball, soccer, no, volleyball, baseball, nobody in here is involved in any sport. Chess, Chess? okay. Do you play any games? Do you play board games? Are you a gamer? Okay. Now, uh, I knew I'd get something. Oh, amen. All right. Okay. But there's rules, aren't there? There's certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. And if, you, if there's things, if you don't do them, you lose or you, you get penalized, right? And there's, but there's certain things that you do to win that contest or, or win the prize. Okay? Well, it just... Our, our Christian life can be the same way. There's certain things we need to do to please our Savior and to get those rewards we have a desire to receive at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? All right? It's, it, and it all starts, you know, our Christianity, being a Christian, starts with salvation. With salvation. Amen? Because if we don't belong, if you, if, you, if you don't belong to a team, if you don't belong to a game, if you don't belong to Christ, none of these are going to do you any good. We're going to do you any good, all right? So it all starts with salvation. And I, might, and I have to ask the question, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Because that's where it starts. That's where it starts. Amen? Okay? So... We talked about salvation. We talked about baptism. Baptism, baptism is what? I'm going to ask you to give me some answers. Baptism is what? Our first... There we go. Did you hear that? Step in obedience. Amen? All right? Our first step in obedience. That's also how we join the church. Amen? What is... What is it, it, as we say, it's our first step in obedience. What is it a picture of? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, and so that that's it. There we are, upright in the baptistry. We die. Amen. And are buried. That's when we go under the water, and we arise as Christ arose. But we arise to walk in a newness of life. Amen. Okay, so there we go. If you've been saved, praise the Lord. But if you haven't been baptized, that's your next step in obedience to Christ. In your obedience to Christ. Okay, so, all right. So, uh, <laughs> got this note, I'm going to ask this. If, uh, you ever heard, you ever been told if you don't clean your room, you don't get supper? Oh, she looked, No. Shook your head, no, amen. Well, have you ever been told if you don't clean your room, you don't get to do a particular thing? 
there we go. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, amen. What, when, when we become obedient to Christ, he's willing to give us more rewards. Amen? You know, I, I, I'm going to use this illustration. When I, when I first got saved, when I got saved 28 years ago, the preacher told me, because I got, I got saved at a little church up in Westgate. It was actually called Westgate Baptist Church. Okay. Their baptistry was broken. And he told me to get baptized by the first person I could find to baptize me when I got back to Abilene, Texas. I got baptized in a church of Christ. I got saved in a Baptist church, but got baptized in a church of Christ because I didn't understand the Bible and understand proper mode, proper 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 reason to get baptized because the church of Christ teaches you have to be baptized you have to accept Christ as your savior and then be baptized to go to heaven okay now I was busy about serving my lord and serving my savior after I did that but there was just something just wasn't just wasn't right one day I heard a message about baptism and the proper mode and the proper reason and the proper way to do it. And God said, bingo. And I got baptized for the proper reason in the proper mode in the proper place. And from that point on, God started doing things in my life that he wasn't doing before. Amen. He started blessing me more and using me more because I did something the proper way. Amen? All right? So I'm going to leave that there. So we talked about salvation. We talked about baptism. We talked about prayer life. What is your prayer life like? What is your prayer life like? Are you praying like you ought to? Amen? I, I, and I don't mean three times a day when you eat. Amen? All right? Do you start your day out with prayer? Do you end your day with prayer? Is there, you know, uh, 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 David prayed three times a day. Sometimes, and, and, and Christ, Christ would go out in the mountains alone before sunup to pray. Okay? When's the, last time, when's, the last, when's the last time you spent hours in prayer? Amen? When's the, <coughs> when's the last time you were at prayer meeting? Amen? Because that's part of the power of our church. That's part of what, how we grow as a church. There's an old saying that goes, it says, it takes three to thrive. Three to thrive as a Christian and three to thrive as a church. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday night. Amen? All right? Okay? So, how's your prayer life? Jeremiah 33 3 tells us what? That's our prayer scripture. That's our, our memory verse. That's our prayer scripture for our prayer meeting. Jeremiah 33 3, and it, tells, it says what? Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If we will pray, we might be amazed. No, not might me. We will be amazed at what God will do for us. Amen? What God will do for us. So we need to improve our prayer life. Improve our prayer life. Okay? All right? And then... The, that the, my last, the last point I talked about was our personal devotion and the Bible. Amen? Personal devotion and the Bible. I'm going to touch on that again. Psalm, Psalm 119. Psalm 119 in verse 11. Good morning, gentlemen. Psalm 119 in verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's personal devotion, amen? That's, that's us devoting ourselves. Because if we, don't, if we don't read the word of God, we don't know that that God would have for us. Amen? All right? So, personal devotion in the Bible. So this morning I want to start by talking about family devotion in the Bible. Now, personal devotion in the Bible and family devotion in the Bible are two different things. Two different things. You ever heard the term family altar? Amen? That's where the family gets together and reads the Bible. The family gets together and prays. 
That's something this nation is sac- sadly lacking. That's something our families are sadly lacking. All right? Turn with me to here again, Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I, I kind of I kind of enjoy seeing uh, Sister Berta on, on Facebook because she's, t- she's teaching Ember Scripture. And Ember will get on there and they, they'll video her quoting Scripture. Amen? Uh, Philippians 4.13 was her last one, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Amen. All right. How do we plant Scripture in our heart? Do we memorize Scripture? Do we memorize Scripture as a family? As I was at camp, as I was at camp and, and, and met, met a, a preacher out of, out of uh, oh, I forget. It, it's a place there in Texas. Anyhow, all right. As we were getting finished with the week, he brought, he brought his cowboy hat to me and he said, Brother Jim, I want you to sign my hat and put your life first on it. Amen? Well, I'm like, wow, okay. That kind of, kind of honored me. He's, he says, I'm, I'm, as, as I meet preachers, I'm having them sign my hat and put their life first on it because I'm going to put that hat up and put it away as, as a memory of meeting these different preachers. So where am I going with this? Do you have a life scripture for you? Do you have a scripture that God's put on your heart that guides you through your life? Amen? My favorite scripture to write on people when somebody asks me to sign a Bible or, or like he signed, had me sign that hat is, is, is James 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore unto God. There's a period there. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen? You know, often we quote the last half of that verse. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But there's an important part of that verse in that first part that says, Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Because without God, we can't resist Satan. We can't do it on our own. Amen? We've got to do it, we've got to do it through him. All right? So it's the same way with the family. All right? Same way with the family. Look, look up with me over here to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. But exhort one another. Amen? What does exhortation mean? What does it mean? It means to challenge. Amen? It means to lift up. Amen? It means to, 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 to put those that need the Lord, all right, or that are following the Lord, put them on the right path and give them that little nudge. Amen? Our, chil- our children so desperately need that little nudge to follow God. Because I guarantee you the world's not teaching them to follow God. The world's doing everything to tell them God doesn't exist. You know, that's one of the first steps of, of communism or socialism to take over a country is to teach that God doesn't exist. But you don't need God. God's a fairy tale. God's not a fairy tale. Amen? Look at, look at that scripture again, okay? Exhort one another. That means more than one, doesn't it? Amen? One another. And parents, we have a, we have a responsibility to be teaching God's heritage about him. Because you understand, our children are God's heritage. Our children are something God gives us that we might raise them to believe in and follow him. Amen? Because they belong to him. All right? Where do they come from? Now, we don't need a lesson in the birds and the bees. Amen? But where do they come from? You ever stop and think about this? The closest we come to being like God is when we create a child. Amen? Amen? We create a child. Amen? 
And as we create that child, who's the first picture of God children get? We parents. Amen? Who do they look to for their sustenance? Amen? We're going to have a child and just let them run around with, though I have seen it, without a diaper? Going to make them fend for themselves when it comes to eating? No, we have that responsibility to do that, don't we? Don't we? And as we become Christians, as we accept Christ as our Savior, we come to understand that we're relying on Him for our sustenance. Amen? Matthew, Matthew 6.33 tells us what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What are the things? You go back and read the, the, the first part of that, ch- or the, the, the scripture, the verses before that, and, and it talks about the, the flowers of the field, the birds of the air, not having to view, need or seek what they need because God provides it. It's the same thing with us if we'll seek his righteousness, righteousness first. And in so doing, we teach our children to do that. How many of us teach our children to lie? Well, now be careful, amen? You ever had the phone ring and, and, the, and the kid answer the phone and it's somebody you didn't want to talk to and you've told them, tell them I'm not here. Do we teach them to lie? Somebody knock on the door, tell them I'm not here, amen? Oh my, so, right? don't wor- normally we don't have to teach our children to lie, do we? What do we have to teach them to not do? To not lie. Amen? The Bible tells us in, in, in Psalm 51, 5 that we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We're born sinners. So we don't have to teach our children to sin. We have to teach our children not to sin. There again, there's where family devotion comes in. Teaching our children the Word of God. Teaching our children the Bible. Listen, I, I only have three copies of this. I want to start. I want to st- start getting these for our church. Amen. All right. They're called Days of Praise. Okay, I already gave you guys one. Okay. All right. They're King James Bible. Okay. All right. You guys want one? Okay. Bird, I'll get you guys one. Okay. They're King James. They're King James Bible based, and they're daily devotions, S- and they can be used. Two ways. We, they can use, we can use them for personal devotion. We can use them for family devotion. I think that's something we desperately need to do as Christians. Amen? Number one, we do need our daily devotion. I mean, my daily devotion is, is I read the Bible every morning. Amen? All right? That's part of my daily devotion. I, and I'm a proverb a day. How many of y'all read a proverb a day? I'm going to challenge you to read a proverb a day. <coughs> Do you know you can read through the book of Proverbs in a month if you just read one a day? Today is the 21st, so I read Proverbs 21. Okay, so you just read one a day. There again, that's part of that family, that's part of that personal devotion, but what if you got your family to do the same thing? All right? Because the Proverbs, uh, there's there's so much in in Proverbs. Amen? Uh, You know what? Real quick, turn over to Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. You'll get your proverb for today. Just think about this. The king's heart, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water he turneth it whatsoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Wow. Amen. Do you, are, are you getting what, what, what God's word's telling us? Amen. All right. Look, think about that again. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Wait a minute. Boy, there's, there, that one already hits us Americans, amen, because of we Americans teach 
teach to be proud. What's one of the what's one of the most one of the favorite songs of the of America? God bless the USA. Amen. Proud to be an American in a land where I know I'm free. Don't, okay, don't don't try to don't try to get me a record deal. Okay, but all right. But I I I like to sing it different. Okay, I'm blessed to be an American. Because that's what we are. We're blessed to be Americans. Can you imagine being being born anyplace else in the world? Can you imagine being born somewhere in the world that if you admit you're a Christian, you could lose your head? Literally. How many of us would 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 be willing to not denounce our Christianity with that big old sword saying, denounce Christ or die? Amen? All right, a high look and a proud heart. Amen. <laughs> I'm better than everybody else. Amen. That high look. Amen. All right. Okay. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenty and this plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. The way of a man is... Fro now, I want you to look at that verse real quick because I want you to look at a word that so often people misread it. Okay? All right? Verse 8. The way of a man is froward. You ever stop and see it that it's froward, not forward? Two different two different definitions. What is forward? Get out your Webster 1828 and look it up. Perverse. Amen. Amen. The way of a man is perverse, forward, and strange. But as for the pure, his work is right. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil. His neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. But God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You know, there you go. Look at that. It is joy to the just to do judgment. Now, wait, wait, thou shalt not judge. The Bible tells us to judge but it also tells us to judge righteously according to the word of God. Amen? The man that want wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Oh, a little wine for the stomachs. Oh, amen. Wait a minute. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgression for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. There is a treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Amen. How, how, you ever caught yourself opening your mouth and getting yourself in trouble when you'd have been better off? <coughs> how's, how's it, how's, how do they say it in Spanish? Cayete. Shut up. Amen. I got taught by some children one day that it's really, you're saying be quiet if you say cayete, por favor. You say cayete, you're saying shut up. I, I, I don't know enough Spanish, but <laughs> makes sense to me. All right, okay. Verse twenty four: Proud and haughty scorners. A proud and haughty scorner is his name who dealeth in proud wrath. 
the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse the labor. He that don't eat, he that don't work, don't eat. Okay. He covereth, he covereth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared, for, prepared against the day of battle, but safety is in the Lord. So you got the 21st proverb for today, so tomorrow morning read 22, and then 23, and then 24, and boy, wasn't there a bunch in that? Well, can you imagine meditating just on that, on that chapter all day, and going back and going over it? Does it, did, did any of that speak to you? Amen? Family devotion, imagine reading that to the family, and having the youngins going, Dad, what's a what's a haughty heart? Do we understand those things? Do you understand that? That's why I'm, I, I I I think I think everybody ought to have three books in your house: your King James Bible, a Webster's eighteen twenty eight dictionary. You say why an eight Webster's eighteen twenty eight? Because that's when Mister Webster wrote his first dictionary and his very purpose was that people might better understand these kind of words in the Bible. Amen? That's why he wrote it. And if you look at the Webster's Bibles that's been updated since then, you see they get away from the Bible. Okay? All right. So that's 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 brother Jim, all right? So a uh, King James Bible, a Webster's 1828 that will also help you understand the you and the thou. Amen? Because they're, they're, they're in the Bible for a reason. Okay? All right? I don't want get, I, I to get into that right now, though. We could, do, we could do a whole Sunday school lesson on why the Bible, why the King James Bible is written the way it's written. Okay? All right? So, so again, King James Bible, uh, Webster's 1828, which you can, did you know you can get it on your phone? I'm a cheapskate. I get it on my phone for free. But a copy of it costs you about fifty bucks. Okay, <laughs> all right. And a Strong's or Cruden's Concordance. Why is a concordance, brother Jim, to help you find help you find scripture when you remember a word? Amen. Propitiate. Anybody ever heard that word? Where is it in the Bible? How many times is it used? Amen. Now, that's one of the big words that's used in the Bible, but most, most, the Bible's written at a sixth grade education, okay? But it does throw some words out there like propitiation. Throws throw some words out there like haughty. Where do you find those? That's where you go to what's called a concordance. It helps you find where those scriptures are using, used, okay? Family devotion in the Bible. We need to be teaching our children the Word of God, not just from the Word of God, but with our lives. Amen? And that's why we need to have them in God's house, too. In Bible study, the preaching, amen? Because they're going to hear the word of God and let, get that, amen? Get that planted in here and in here, amen? So family devotion in the Bible. Number six, church attendance. Now I'm going to go to Medlin. Church attendance, church involvement, and soul winning. Amen? And soul winning. Let's back them up with scripture. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10 and look at verse 25. The Bible says. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. As the manner of some is. But exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day is coming? 
the Lord's return or our death. Amen? We need to be prepared to die. Uh, y'all, know, y'all know I lost my Susie here six months ago. Almost no, seven months ago now. Huh? December. Man, it's coming up on a year. 61 years and six weeks old. You think she was, you think she had plans to die? I didn't have any plans for losing her. I didn't, amen? We don't know when we're going to die. Amen? But as we see, as we get older, we know that's going to happen, and we ought to be preparing for that. But we ought, as a church, need to be preparing for that too. And we need to be doing what we can to prepare our nation for God. What? What's the, what's the next thing that Jesus is going to do? Return. When's the rapture going to happen? <coughs> the second hand's on the five. In the next 35 seconds, could he come? Yeah. Are you ready? starts with salvation because if you don't have him as your savior if he was to come in the next 20 seconds you're left here while I'm gone I know I'm gone and I would pray there were some of y'all that are saved you're gone I pray that you're saved because you'd be gone too amen all of a sudden the video will be blank actually you'll just see my glasses my my mouthpiece my all my stuff will just, it, that video will just show it all fall to the ground. Because we ain't taking nothing here with us, my, my partials. <laughs> Amen. Okay. I'll get real teeth again. <laughs> Amen. All right. Because okay. right. it's going to happen. When's it going to happen? We don't know. But the Bible tells us that being in church is helping us get ready for that. Amen. All right. Okay. Not forsaking, amen, it says not forsaking the assembling of yourself, our, ourselves together, comma, as the manner of some is. There are people, you know, people are not getting it. People are, the devil has used COVID to get people out of church. There was already a problem before COVID happened. They're still afraid of COVID, amen, a glorified cold. Come on, amen. <laughs> I I don't want to get. I could get into that, but I'm that that amen. All right, not forsaking the as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. What did I say? Exhorting means challenging. Amen. Lifting up. Come on, come on. We need to go to church. We need to. Amen. All right. Okay. But exhorting one another. And as and so much the more as we see the day approaching, we don't know when Jesus is coming. What a, what a great place to be if he was to come, <laughs> leaving church, amen. All right. So church attendance, church involvement, and so winning. What about involvement? Acts chapter five. I need to hurry. Acts chapter five. Acts chapter 5, look at verse 24. Got the right scripture. Uh Uh-oh. I don't have, that's not the right scripture, folks. I pulled a Jake. Amen. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Re- I'm gonna have to look that one back up. Okay. Church involvement, amen? We need to be involved in God's work. If you go to church, you're going to get involved, amen? All right? 
you know one of the best ways to grow a church is not through the preacher, okay? Especially somebody like me, okay? I, I, I look even that mistake, all right. But you, I, I'm not a, I'm not a. How do you say that? I'm not a great orator. Amen. So if you want to hear a great orator, find a great orator. But that's not going to grow a church. You know what's going to grow a church? Bible study or Sunday school. When we do our best to get people to come in and read and learn the Word of God. Two reasons. Bible study time is more personal. Okay? Jake's over there working with a group of kids. That's more personal. Amen? All right? And then, and then as you grow, we, we, we want a, a class of, of, of the little ones, like Chop and Ember and, and what's the youngest one's name? Julian. Julian. Amen? Chop, and, ch chop and, 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 and Ember and Julian. And then we want a class for the teens. And then we want uh, young adults. And then we want, does that make sense? And that's why you grow a church. Amen? Because it becomes more personal. And you can minister to them easier, okay? You get a pastor. You get a pastor that's trying to keep a character of three hundred people, and it's like, it, Amen. God put God put him in a place to guide and direct the church, guide and direct people, Amen, and bring the word of God. Okay, it's not all about what it's not all about the pastor. And if you're looking to me, you're looking to a. You're looking to a saved man who's doing his best to serve God. I got in trouble the other day for saying, you know, I'm not much. I'm not worth it. Don't you quit saying that. Amen. Well, I ain't, but he in me is. Amen. He in me is. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. How about soul winning? That's what I'm going to end up with. John chapter 15. Gospel of John chapter 15. just going to read a few verses, but read verses 1 through 17. I don't have time, okay? I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Excuse me, let me go back. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me beareth, that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, and it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now we, now ye are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, and, and, and abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, the same bringeth forth much, forth much fruit. For without me you can do ye can do nothing. If a ba if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Go on, goes on and go on. Look, at, look down to verse 16. He says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that ye love one another. We have a responsibility to do our best to win people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. How do people become Christians? <coughs> Are they born into the church? Are they born Christians? No. They're born again. Jesus, Jesus told, Jesus, Jesus told uh, uh, Nicodemus, amen, ye must be born again. That's how they become Christians. That's our responsibility is to show them how to become Christians, how to get saved, how to become born again. Amen? So, the sixth, the sixth, the sixth 
<coughs> the six areas of the Christian life, salvation, baptism, prayer life, personal devotion in the Bible. We covered family devotion in the Bible this morning, church attendance, involvement, and soul winning. Okay? Guarantee you, if you do those things, amen, and the more you do those things, the greater your reward in heaven will be. All right, let's take a short break. Go ahead and turn off my receiver so it doesn't start going crazy. Thank you. Yeah. 